Hi, welcome back to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. Behind me here on the bench I have a Mountfield SP164 petrol lawnmower. I'm going to show you the engine on this in a minute, but for reference it's an ST120 overhead valve engine with 123cc of power. In this video I'm going to take you through the full service and everything you're going to need to know to service one of these lawnmower engines. I'm going to include most things you're going to need, including servicing the carburetor, removing the air filter box, removing the petrol tank, taking the starter recoil off and replacing the rope, which oil you'll need, where it goes, where the fuel goes, all the obvious things and some of the not so obvious things as well. So I'm going to make it as detailed as I can. It might be a longer video, but I'm hoping at some stage I'm going to cover everything you might want to know about servicing this Mountfield SP164. So I'm going to start by stripping this lawnmower down. I'm going to show you probably the most important part first and how to service the carburetor. So I'll just show you the item just if you want to see if it's the same lawnmower that you might have. This is a, an actual Mountfield SP164 as I've said before. This is actually a brand new lawnmower. It's never had any petrol in, never had any oil in or anything like that. So while it's in this condition it's a lot easier for me to take all the parts off, show you around and show you how to service these parts up and what they should be like of course from new because you may have parts missing, you may have taken some things off as well and you may want to know where they go back on so we'll cover all that. So it's a Mountfield ST120 overhead valve engine and a Mountfield SP164. If your lawnmower's not identical to this, maybe it's got the primer bulb on here and a few variations. If it's got the same style carburetor on underneath here, what I call a bowl style carburetor, stay tuned because they're all very similar these lawnmowers and what I'm going to show you on this video will probably be relevant to whichever lawnmower you have. So stay tuned and we'll get started right away. So to service the carburetor, what I like to do is I like to have full access to everything I'm going to want to work on. So I'm going to remove this air filter box and housing. I'm going to remove the petrol tank. I'm going to remove the recoil just so I can get the carburetor off. I can get the fuel line off from underneath here. And there's a reason for that, which I'll cover again when I put all this back together. There's a reason I take all that off. Not only can you see better, but um, there's a few other reasons for doing that as well. So stick with the video. It might be a little bit longer than normal. And if you're struggling to get your lawnmower running and you've got one of these, it might be because of stale fuel. If you just undo this bolt on the bottom of the carburetor, this will allow you to drain some fuel out. So put something under here and you might get some fresh fuel coming from your tank into the carb and it might just get your mower going again. As you can see here, I've got quite a selection of uh, lawnmowers. I've even got a cordless one there. But I've got over 300 videos on the channel here now. I've done all sorts of services on all sorts of engines. So they are relatively similar, but I've never actually serviced this engine before. You can see on the box here. However, it doesn't really faze me because, as I said before, they're all the same. You've got the same components, and it's basically exactly the same procedure. So if you've not subscribed to this channel and you like watching things like this, please give me a subscribe and tick the bell notification. That way it'll keep you up to date on all the videos I film and you get an email every time I release a new one as well. So to start with, I'm going to remove this recoil cover over here. Now on this design you can't get in with a spanner to simply undo these three bolts that go through the top of here so you're going to need a socket. I've got an extended socket here and I've got an impact gun as well. You don't need an impact gun you could just get your normal socket on here and you could undo these parts but just to save a little bit of time I'm going to back these parts off. Now even though I'm just removing this recoil cover I have removed the spark plug lead as well. This isn't going to start, there's no fuel in it, there's no oil in it, it's never been run but for safety, just for the, everybody that's watching, please do this first before you do any other work on the mower. So I'm going to undo three parts here. There's three bolts that run through here with the nuts on the top. So I'm going to remove the three nuts and we're going to take this cover off. So as I said, I've never done this before and I've only removed two there. So I have a problem now, I need to get the third actual nut off. Now sometimes on these covers this part here you can get your fingers under and this actual top part here comes off but on this lawnmower it's in one piece I'm going to feel across this sticker here and just feel if there's a hole in here and I'm going to really carefully I don't really like doing this I'm going to have to try and just peel this actual sticker off because I don't see another part where there's a nut that can come off so I'm going to take this sticker off here really carefully. I'm just going to run a knife under here, peel it off and I think there's a hole just on the top there where I can get this extra nut off. So I'm just going to really carefully go around this. I've just been around this once with my knife. I'm just going to take the edge of this off. I don't like it when I have to do this but I have got a good way of putting these stickers back on 
as well. So I'm just going to take my time and remove this sticker from the top here. There we go. And I can now get into here and I can get the third one off. Just remember that this part sometimes comes off and you don't always have to remove the sticker. So we'll take this other one off as well. And now we'll put all these three parts off. I should be able to lift this up and move the recoil out of the way. Before I move that out of the way I'm going to tip this over. I'll probably lose a couple of these. I'm going to keep all these bolts now. Two of them have dropped out I've caught one. I'm going to put these in a magnetic parts tray that I've got. So I don't lose any parts. I'm going to do this with all the parts as I go along and put them in this little magnetic tray here. So move that to one side. These are all the little things I, I regularly use when I'm uh, repairing these lawnmowers for profit. So I'm going to put those in there and I know that they can't get lost from that, that point on. So if you're watching this worrying that this is going to be too much for you to do, please don't because it's, it's a, a lot more straightforward than you might imagine. Some lawnmowers have this cover on and some don't. That just lifts off out of the way. And the only reason I'm taking this off is so I can show you around the rest of the mower and other things that you might want to service. You don't necessarily have to do this but it's a lot easier to get in. So that's the whole recoil out of the way. And don't forget we've removed this spark plug lead as well. The next thing I want to tackle is removing this actual fuel tank. Now this is all nice and easy for me because I don't have any fuel in this lawnmower. Normally I would use an extractor and take all the fluids out of the lawnmower. So if you have got your fuel line attached and you've got some fuel left in here, which you will have, you need to clamp this fuel line. I use a pair of forceps to do this. You can just open these up and you can just clamp them. I used to use a set of mole grips, that will work. And if you don't have any of those things, you can always just pull this pipe off here, get yourself a bolt and put it in the end of the actual pipe just to stop the actual fuel coming out. Now I would usually take it off from the carburetor, but on this lawnmower, because it's so close to the petrol tank, I'm actually going to slide this fuel clip down here, down this petrol line. Just got my finger on that, like that. I'm actually just going to pull this fuel line off here. And I wanted to show you this because I've done one of these lawnmowers before and I didn't show it. Inside here is actually a fuel filter. And I've had a lot of messages on the channel in the comments section about people who service carburetors on similar setups to these and they still don't run right and I do believe it's because people don't clean this filter so that's something we're going to have a further look at as well when we're going along but for now what I want to do is get the petrol tank off so at this point if this was full of fuel you could obviously just tip it like that and you could just dump this out into a container and please do the right thing as well and um, dispose of it in the right way so I'm looking in here and to me it looks like there are two more 10 mil bolts I'm going to get this in here once again you could just use a normal socket take that off there and the fuel tank is completely off it's as simple as that once again I keep hold of these two parts and drop these in the tray so before I dive into this carb a bit deeper I'm going to actually go through this first now inside here this actually goes into the fuel tank this actually goes back up through the bottom of this here and these I do believe get clogged up really easily and the reason I know about all these things are from the fantastic subscribers I've got I think nearly 11,500 subscribers on YouTube and they send me messages about things like these Mountfield mowers saying they've serviced the car but it still doesn't run right and I ask them if they've done the filter so this filter in here you can buy these and if I can find one I'll put a link in the description of the video here on YouTube but these filters actually pull out if you just manipulate it a little bit you can see this actual filter so this has got like a, a little mesh on here, you can probably just about make out on there. And this needs to be completely clean and you need to be able to look down from the top of this right underneath here and just, if you tip it up make sure there's no fuel in it of course, make sure you can see right through to the other side there should be a tiny hole at this end here. But I would suggest um, if you're really really struggling you could take this off and you could just connect the fuel line back up to the tank. Now that's not the correct way to do it, but if I can't find a part for this separately and you don't want to buy a full fuel tank as nobody would, what I would do with this, first of all, before taking it off and running it without it, I'd get some of this STP or any carb spray cleaner and I'd spray this off and if you've got a can of compressed air or an air compressor, give this part a really good blowout because most people don't know this part is here. So on this SP164, make sure that you actually clean this filter as part of the carb service. If you have a Mountfield RS100, if it says RS100 on the actual recoil anyway, 
I do believe I'm correct in saying, I might be corrected in the comments section, I do believe I'm correct in saying this has a similar setup with this actual fuel filtering as well. So if you've serviced the carb on a Mountfield RS100 and it's still not running right, take a look at this part that goes into the petrol tank. If you've not seen my full service video on the RS100, I'll put a link to that in the top right hand corner of your screen now and a link to it in the description of the video. So obviously with it being a new mower, this part's clean so I'm going to bed that back in to this fuel line here. Just push that back in there. And these are quite flimsy, you can break these fairly easily. So I'm going to leave that in there and I don't need to do anything else with that. And that was really one of the reasons that I pulled this fuel line off from the other end of the petrol tank. Okay, so the next stage of getting towards the carburetor here is to remove the air filter. So we're going to take this air filter box off. I won't do anything too fast so you can see, but there's two tabs on the top of here. If you press these down, this little box pulls towards you. Sometimes they're stiff, so get yourself a screwdriver under here and just press it down a little bit. This box should just lift off here on a little catch at the bottom, and that comes off. And if this is dirty on the back of here especially, make sure everything's clean before you put it back together. In here, I believe there's two air filters in here, it's a slightly different type. Although I've not done one of these before, I've watched some videos on it. So yeah, you've got your air filter, which is a thinner one here. And you've got another one that sits inside of here as well. So I'm going to take these out. And actually, in the description of this video, I'm going to li link to a load of different parts for service in this lawnmower. So if you're struggling to find maybe a carburetor or an air filter or the correct spark plug, I'll try and put everything in the description of this video. So now we're in here. What we need to do is we need to get off this actual air filter housing box and these bolts from the carburetor run right through this air filter housing box to these nuts here. So I'm going to take these two nuts off but before I do that I want to show you something that's inside here as well. So there's no actual primer on this lawnmower, there's no red button to press to actually prime the engine with fuel and there's no throttle on here either. So this has an automatic choke on and what I'm going to show you in here is just in case you've got a lawnmower that's really difficult to start or never starts from cold but starts okay once it's warmed up. The reason for that is inside here you have a, an actual choke mechanism. This is an automatic choke on here and it should be closed. You can see there I'm just doing my best to film this where these two cross-headed screws are. You can see how this what I call a butterfly valve, it's like a, a choke mechanism really is laid flat, it's actually blocking off all the air. It should be like that before the lawnmower starts. Sometimes these can be stuck open like this and if you find, if you look on your lawnmower and yours is sticking open like this you won't get any choke and your lawnmower won't start. So one thing to check if your lawnmower won't start on any lawnmower that's got this type of throttle on is making sure that this is closed. Sometimes you'll need to set this up if you've got a throttle on the actual handle but on this engine and on this particular model of mower from Mountfield this one's obviously working correctly but make sure when the lawnmower's not running that this actual choke is closed. With the fuel tank out of the way now and this actual air filter off and all the recoil off you can see just how much access we've got to work in all these areas. I can show you all these springs and linkages. And don't worry if you've lost any of yours I will cover that later in the video. But always make sure as a general rule that everything moves about and everything kind of springs back. I always call it in like a tug of war type fashion. You can see there when you move this you can probably just see now the choke actually opens and closes so if you've got any old grass on the rear or dirt and twigs and sticks and stuff and it's just a mess and it's all covered in dirt this doesn't move properly you'll find that the choke doesn't actually do what it's supposed to do so now I've got that off I'm going to actually back off these two nuts from here and I'm going to pull the air filter housing off and the carburetor will start to drop down this may seem really complicated but I can assure you once you've done this more than once I could probably take this off and put this back on in kind of under 5-10 minutes really. It only seems to take a, a while while I'm talking through it but it's so simple. We've just got to take these two actual nuts off here now. Now before I do that I'm just going to film around like I just promised you. I will film all these springs and linkages and I'm going to do this before I take anything off. So if you've lost any parts on this type of lawnmower this is where the springs go now. So I'm going to do my best to actually get in here and just film everything I can without losing focus. So you've got obviously your governor arm here and everything tightens up from the back. You've got a pin through here, you've got the spring and you've got this linkage which runs down here and back under your breather pipe which goes on. You must make sure that all this moves freely. I'm just going to have a look around here as well. You can see where this connects to across the front and why it's really important that nothing's obstructed and everything needs to move. So I've filmed as much as I can if I'm honest, for my reference as much as yours. 
and I'm going to take these two parts off here but if this is your first time of ever doing this and you've got a, a decent camera phone like most people have now take you know 30 seconds just to take yourself some photographs of all the springs and linkages before you actually undo these parts so I'm going to unbolt these now as you can see here I'll start with this one at this side there's only two on here I'll take that off now I like to try and keep the air housing in position so once you pull all these parts off sometimes the carb drops down sometimes it doesn't depends how the setup is on this one I think this actual air filter box is just going to pull off here so you must keep your eye on this actual breather at the top here there's an actual breather pipe here and that might just actually cling on to this air filter housing a little bit so I want to take that off there this is a new lawnmower and I thought that might happen I want to make absolutely sure that I don't lose the gasket off the back of here but this breather pipe should just pull off either here or on the back of it so I'm going to take it off this part here pull this off make sure you keep your eye on the gaskets if you're doing this outside that could easily drop off and most of the time when your lawnmower has been running a while and it's been used you might find it actually sat on the carburetor here if this is covered in grease and oil and dirt and everything on your lawnmower make sure it's completely clean before you put anything back together and see there's no primer bulb on here it's just uh, the air filter housing there's nothing too special about this really but you must make sure you don't lose this gasket so this setup looks very similar to the RS100 video I linked to earlier and in the description how these parts kind of knock together you see how the plastic parts kind of nudge each other one knocks the other one out of the way that's how it needs to work I'm just going to film in here for anybody who's kind of got themselves in a little bit of a mess and they're not sure what should knock into which other part so you can see here this one I'm just trying to show you here how this plastic part nudges into this plastic part when you move it forward with your finger and that actually opens up the choke you see so what I was showing you before I can actually get in and explain a little bit better now and you can see there if I hold the linkage there all this stays open and this is exactly why this part here on the top and this part here must move freely I can't emphasize that enough if you've got an SV150 engine that idles really badly it just revs up and down you have loads of problem with it there's um, this little spring on an SV150 mount field engine is really really thin and it fails and what happens with that is it doesn't have any kind of bounce in it like this one bounces back so Alan Partridge didn't he bounce back anyway they must be working correctly these springs and on the SV150 engines you get on some mount fields these are really weak and if you can't get it running right a lot of the time it's down to this spring but it's nice to see that this one's a little bit thicker and they've actually built this one up quite nicely obviously it's all working all right but I wanted to show you that sometimes you can do everything you can service the carb check all the linkages and it might be something as simple as this spring so if you've got an SV150 or an RV150 engine you want to be checking that so a link to every video that I've got on a SV150 engine in the top right hand corner now and I think you get the idea you can see around the carburetor you can see all the linkages and I'm just going to pull this actual carburetor off here once I've worked out how to unhook the linkages I think this one here I might be able to do it now just pops out from under there this plastic part here on the back of here where my th thumbnail is there's, there's actually nothing there you just push this part over the top I'll do it with the camera on the tripod and this one here you just open that one up like that lift it out so that's one of them out so only two linkages on here which is great I'm just going to try and unhook this one here as well now I've got my hand free this actual clip comes off and it swings around out of the way and hopefully you can see that that's designed to do that so when you get that back it needs to go back in that hole there drop it back down and then this clip goes back over the top that's how it goes back so I'm going to take that off again take the linkage out of the way leave everything connected at the other end there's no need to take any of these other linkages out and then this whole car should just pull off here it should just slide over the top of here there's just a little bit of uh, the gasket that's just come off on these threads so I'll just take that off I'm just going to put that in my tray and then this whole thing should lift off and this carburetor here if you're having running problems will be 90% uh, of the problem on any lawnmower like this if you're having surging revving up and down problems or stalling and you know just general post starting problems if you clean the carburetor out on an engine like this 
90% or 95% of the time you'll eliminate all the problems as long as all these springs are working so make sure everything even with it disconnected is springing back and I quite like this design because the spring that sits under here that actually goes around the back they've actually put this little part in the back and the spring hooks to it really quite firmly I do really like that I think that's much better than I've seen on the SV150s anyway so you must make sure this is clean you must make sure the whole carb's clean and if you want to you can take this off to clean the carburetor out in fact I'll do that now I'm going to remove that fuel clip down there I'm going to pull this actual whole fuel pipe off here you've got the whole carb off here and I'm going to show you exactly how to service this up right now one of the things that you might not really realise if you've taken this apart is which way these actual linkages go around so I'll just spend a second filming that this linkage goes like this and goes into the top of there and this one goes like this because I remember doing this in the early days and taking these off when nobody really had a camera phone or a really poor one anyway and thinking where does this go you know does this one go over here or does that one go there which way around does it go and you can soon get in a mess but this one hooks over here you can see how it just clicks in at this other end here like that so I'm going to leave that attached for now but that's where they go so just quickly before I service the carburetor I'm just going to show you something else as well because I've got the tools I'm going to show you how to check this actual keyway in the top of the crankshaft if you've hit maybe a tree stump or a drain cover or something like that and you'll almost kind of vibrating that badly it's moving across you know your driveway or wherever it is it's probably because you've actually bent the actual keyway that fits in the crankshaft of the engine just because I've got the tools I'll show you how to check that don't forget spark plugs removed so I'm just going to undo this top nut on here I'm going to show you exactly what to look for to see if you've got a damaged flywheel key what you need to look for in here is this actual keyway here down the top of here it's actually called a woodruff key and it sits down this hole here it's probably quite difficult to film here but it should be a, a perfect shape if you see this and it's kind of knocked across and you've actually got the flywheel this is a flywheel for anybody who doesn't know if it's knocked across and the keyway that's in here looks damaged or anything like that then then you need to replace it because if it's got any marks in it at all it offsets this actual flywheel and when it offsets the flywheel it, it gets the timing at the wrong part with this ignition coil so it'll fire at the wrong time it'll try and fire at the wrong time you won't get the correct spark and your lawnmower won't run so if you've got a lawnmower that's got spark and it's got fuel going to the car and it still won't run there's a good chance that this actual keyway is damaged in here and it's thrown out the timing on these magnets of the flywheel so it's just something else to check I've actually recently filmed on the channel uh, an easy way to remove these flywheels as well I've actually got this air hammer here if you find a, a solid part under here and put the air hammer on, just press up a little bit. I actually wanted to film that because I had a subscriber ask how effective that air hammer was on a, a newer flywheel just to remove it. So I thought I'd just film that for him. I did drop a little bit of WD-40 onto this actual crankshaft and just put that bar under there just to prise this up a bit. And the air hammer drops in here and it actually pops this flywheel up. I've also got the actual operator cable operated at the top so that the brake isn't touching the flywheel so with this like that I can get the flywheel off and the reason I want to do that is I want to actually show you the keyway because I wasn't really happy with the video that I've just filmed actually showing you the keyway so there's a little bit of WD-40 down there where I just dropped it onto the shaft before I did it with the air hammer so let me show you the keyway now this is the keyway I was attempting to show you in the last clip that I filmed you can see how it sits neatly in here there's nice sharp edges across it and there's nothing damaged because this is brand new lawnmower of course but if there's any knocks in this or it looks kind of like an L shape you need to take this out and replace it you can actually just unhook this and get a screwdriver like this you should just actually be able to unhook this and take this out and see how it just pops out like that and I'll show you exactly what it should look like it's like a, a kind of half moon shape but you can see how even it is and how perfectly shaped it is as well there's no knock to the edge of it and you can just imagine if that's got a knock in how much it amplifies over the actual whole width of the flywheel and then onto this ignition coil as well so that's what it should look like if it doesn't look like that these are not much money to buy I suggest you replace it and this is a common thing that you will need to do if you've hit something with a blade underneath and you have a lot of vibration issues 
So I've refitted the keyway there. I just wanted to quickly show you that because I wasn't happy with how I filmed it. So you put your actual keyway back in there. There's a little cutout on the top of here which lines up. Let me drop that in there. I do have on the channel uh, a full video showing you how to remove these flywheels. And it isn't actually that easy to do without the correct tools. But while I've got the tools, I just thought I'd show you what to look for. So I'm going to put that back in there. I always thread this by hand, by the way. Just to make sure you're not going to cross thread everything because if you cross thread the top of this actual crankshaft running through here that's kind of the end of it really. So now I know that's threaded I'm going to tighten this back up. Make sure you haven't got anything underneath such as your hands. I'm going to tighten that back up. I thought that was just worth spending a couple of minutes filming that just to kind of educate people on what to look for if they're having different issues with this lawnmower. In just a second I'm going to show you how to service the carburetor so don't worry. I just want to show you here there's this that sits on here, I think this is a heat shield and then you've got behind here, you've got another thin little gasket at the back there you can just see my thumb ticking across there and then you've got a spacer here you don't need to take those off, leave them there put that on there, but I want to show you them if this space is missing you'll never get the car back on correctly, so let's just pop that back on there we don't need to do anything with those parts if they look like they're all okay look at this here, what company this evening Let's get on with servicing this carburetor. Yours, of course, will be full of petrol still. There'll still be some fuel in here. What we need to do is just remove these parts from the bottom of here. You can leave this drain plug one on here. We just need to undo this with a 10mm spanner. And I always do these by hand, really, because you can easily strip these threads. So I'm just going to get my spanner on here. I'm just going to undo this part here. You can see that's just gone there. And this, at this point, will usually be full of fuel. If you've watched any of my other videos, this is the part when you know it always normally leaks out. So it's a lot easier for me tonight, so I'm not working with petrol everywhere. So you've got a little uh, washer on the bottom of there, and put that to one side. And then this part should come off, which it does here, obviously, nice and clean. Any dirty fuel, still fuel in there, clean it all out, get some carb spray and clean the whole thing out. So... I've got a brand new carburetor here so there's obviously no parts going to be missing on here. I'm going to take it all apart and I'm going to show you how to service this up. So I'm going to take this pin out here. I think this is called a bridge pin. Someone sent me a message in the comments section the other week. I think it's called a bridge pin. Leave me a comment in the comments section again if I've uh, got it wrong. But anyway, either way it's a silver pin. I'm going to take that out of there. This white part's the float. I'm going to show you that in a second. So put everything that you take out in a container and then in here you can see the little silver part there at the tip of my finger there that's actually the needle I'm going to keep my eye on that as I take this out sometimes these are on a spring and this one is you can probably just about see in there there's actually a tiny little spring there and you don't want to lose that spring if you can leave all this part connected up like that that's the best way to do this you can just give this a little bit of a spray up sometimes these are on a spring and sometimes they aren't. If they're not, just slide it back down this little gap inside here. That's all you need to do. But I like them on a spring really because it just feels a bit more definite there. But be really careful if you take that off because that's really easy to lose that part. Now if you have an ultrasonic cleaner, which most people I understand don't have, if you have one, put this in it now, fill it up and leave it on and it'll clean out all the little intricate parts inside this carburetor. All the bits you can't see. That's the absolute best way you can do this. But for the uh, average person such as myself all we can do with this is we can look for every tiny little hole in here and what we need to do is spray all this up with some carb spray cleaner and this gets off any kind of hardened old fuel inside as well you need to take all these parts out anything that you can take out and back off and unscrew take out and just try and remember how far in the screws were to look like they're on a spring most of them aren't nowadays to be honest you can just take them out but what you do need to do is you need to take this actual main jet out from inside here so I have a, a thin flat headed screwdriver and there's actually a cut out in the brass part at the bottom of here what you need to just do is get in here and undo this part here and this is the main part that gets clogged up so you've got to take this out and you've got to make sure that all the tiny little pinholes in these parts are completely clean and one little tip I'm going to give is this rubber in here I always call this a gasket it's, it's a seal 
actual uh, carburetor ball seal that sits around here. I did on a video recently and I got carburetor spray on that and it actually expanded and I couldn't get it back on. So I don't obviously need to clean this in this video. I'm going to show you exactly what I would do and one little tip would be to take this actual seal off here and don't get anything on there, don't get any carb spray on there. So let's see if that drops out. I just wanted to wait there a second because there's two parts to this. This little brass part here, hopefully you can just about see that side is flat and this side has a tiny little cut out section on the top of it where you can get your screwdriver in. So you want to make sure that there's a nice hole in there and everything's nice and clean. You can get something in there and clean that out. You can actually get little carburetor cleaning kits with little kind of little bits of pin, little, like little pins on the end. You can poke through all here like little wires. And then you've got the jet in here as well. And this goes back in. I think somebody commented calling this an emulsion tube, so that's probably correct as well. I always call it like a mouse's flute because it looks like a like a flute or a recorder a mouse would play. Anyway, it's like a tower and the thinnest end goes back in the car first for anybody who doesn't know. It goes in with the thinnest end first, but on here you can probably just about see these tiny little holes. There's actually tiny little holes in here and these are the really important parts when you're doing this service that you make sure that all these are completely clean and make sure you can see right through this as well from one end to the other. So I'll take a really good look around at all these little parts, all these little holes in here right through here. This is where the fuel line connected from at the beginning, you probably remember. Well, all you need to do with this is get yourself some carb spray cleaner, spray the whole thing up get in every little hole you can find and then if you've got an air compressor go around the whole thing blow this out with compressed air and as I always say on every video if you don't have an air compressor you can buy cans of compressed air and you can blow down all these little parts all these little holes and make sure this is completely clean and dry before you put it back together including the actual bowl part of this and that's the only thing you need to do to service one of these carburetors up take all the parts off spray it out poke a little pin or a little bit of wire through all these holes as long as you're not making them wider that'll be fine make sure it's, it's as clean as you can get this and nice and dry before we put it back together so once you're happy you've cleaned all this off what I normally do is clean the outside off first before I actually take the ball off so none of the dirt from the outside goes on the inside but once you've done that we're going to take this again this tube here with the thinnest part of the top and that just drops in there make sure I'll say this again make sure this is completely clean drop that in at the top then I'm going to take this part here that's actually got the flat headed part for the screwdriver to drop in make sure you can see that this just drops in as well it drops right down if you press it watch you see how it goes in there it'll wiggle its way all down and then we're just going to tighten this back up to be real careful with this it should fit quite a way down before it actually tightens up if it doesn't just be real careful take it out and start doing this again so that goes in there you can feel when it's tight and because I've kept all the needle and the float together I can just drop the float back in here like that I can refit the pin which goes back through here this should go through here and on this actual carb it goes through the plastic completely through it to the other side there we go we get that back through and I like to make sure there's an even gap each side of that as well and one thing you can clearly see on here, in this little gap here, when you move the float, because it's got a spring, you can see that the needle's moving up and down. This should do this on any type of car, whether it's got the actual spring on or not. But it's much better on this, because you can quite clearly see that this actual needle is moving up and down. If it doesn't seat properly, what happens is when you put the ball back on, it fills up with fuel, this float goes up which is designed to stop the fuel when the float goes up with the actual fuel hitting it from the bottom it actually pushes this needle up the needle seals this part here so if you don't get it right you'll have fuel coming out and it'll come out the, uh, the sides of the carb as well so if you've got a fuel leak there's a really good chance that it's because the needle hasn't seated correctly on the carburetor so at this point don't forget if you took off this actual seal in here make sure you put this back on and then what you need to look at here is this is where the fuel line went on if you remember so this is pointing towards the front of the lawnmower where you've got good access now I always like to fit these back on this way because this drain plug will then be facing the front of the lawnmower and if I want to at some point in the future I can get to that a lot easier and I can undo this actual drain plug and release some fuel from there 
you can actually see this has been marked off as well. So I've got that there, I'm going to put this part back in here, which has got this seal washer on the bottom. This is super critical part of doing a service. These carbs are around, I would imagine, about £35-40 pounds now. They're not cheap, but this part here on many lawnmowers is really easy to break. The threads inside here, which are on this part in here, are really easy to cross thread. So never ever do this with any uh, sort of impact tool. I do this by hand. I just put this in and obviously it looks really straightforward but some people just put them in a bit and they go to tighten them up and they break all the threads so make sure you've got everything lined up where you might want it to drain the fuel out like that and the your spanner I'm just going to tighten this back up and make sure it's reasonably tight a bit of common sense in play there and that's enough that's all you need to do and once you've got this back together that's the carb completely serviced and I can't stress enough I will point this out one more time even though I'm repeating myself this part here on either this one, the RS100 or the SV150 engine must spring around like this. So in just a second I'm going to bolt this carburetor back on I want to show you how to do it. One thing I want to mention is I've just filmed an assembly video for this lawnmower earlier today and these handles, I see this a lot on this type of lawnmowers. People don't always get them down to the bottom here. They kind of sit in here, they just push them in and think, oh I don't know what this screw's for. But this screw actually goes in this plastic part here and you must make sure you can see the black part here is the bottom of the handle you must make sure these handles go all the way to the bottom and then you put the screw in and the reason I'm mentioning that is because obviously I'm lifting this up and down to put it on my bench and if I hadn't done that correctly the handles could have slid down and it could have dropped on my feet one thing I really like about these uh, designs is the carbs really easy to get back on. I like the fact you can put the carb back on before you connect the linkages up and you don't have any little springs that are going into it. So to put this back on, I'm just going to push this back on here and then these linkages, you remember, just go back on. Normally on a lawnmower you've got to try and get the linkages on first, it can be a bit awkward. But this one here, remember, went over the top. Just interesting to see if you can actually remember now, isn't it? So put that one over the top and that drops in and then this one had the little spinny part on you see the little hole there, it's actually a little hole in this part here it goes in there like that and then this part swings around and clicks like that and then we must make sure that it's moving exactly as it was before where this plastic part knocks into this one and kind of opens the door if you like so you can see how it knocks together and everything's moving, the choke's moving whether I move this one or whether I move this one manually as well and that's exactly as it was before so with that done we can refit the air filter box so if you remember back to the beginning of the video I said I would kind of justify why I take off the starter recoil and why I take off the petrol tank obviously it's so you can see where everything goes I wanted to explain that but there's another reason for that and the reason is I like to fit the fuel tank back on before I put the air filter housing back on and the reason for that is because you can get to the actual part in here and you can actually see where the fuel line connects to so if you look here this is where it wants to go to but with the air filter housing on round here it blocks half of it off so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to refit this actual fuel line back onto this tank first I'm going to refit the tank so I've got my fuel filter in there make sure you've cleaned this and poke that back in there I'm going to put the actual fuel line back over the top make sure it goes all the way up to the top of there and I get one of my fuel clips put that over the top and then because there's no fuel in here you could drain this out as well what I like to do at this point is I like to refit this actual fuel tank back onto the actual carburetor because the reason I do this is because if you've got any leaks it's much better to find out now before you put the recoil back on before you put the actual air filter housing back on as well if you can connect this up now bolt this back on drop a little bit of fuel in then just spend a few minutes looking on the carburetor making sure you've not got any fuel coming out of the bottom of the carb leaking or particularly pouring back out of here because the needle hasn't seated properly it's much easier to do that without the air filter housing on so you can see and you can just get in a lot easier and it's, it, it really does make more sense to refit the petrol tank before you refit the air filter housing so I'm going to clip that back on 
just push that back on there. If you can't get those rubber parts on by the way, what you can do is I, I normally boil the kettle. If these have gone really kind of hard over time or brittle, I boil the kettle and I put a little bit of boiling hot water in a cup and I just place this in the bottom of the cup to soften it up and when it's soft it pushes over these parts a lot easier. So while that's there, I can get this actual clip on. I don't really like these clips, I don't think they really do much but because it came with it, I'll put it back on. I'm going to put the fuel tank back in place there. I'm going to get the two parts that I had earlier. Got like blue Peter in it. One I, repair, one, I, one I repaired earlier. One I prepared earlier. <laughs> and then I'm going to the tool again. I'm going to put this back on. So it's all good fun on this channel. You know, give us a subscribe if I'm helping you anyway, because it's late and I'm tired, so I'm getting my words wrong. <laughs> So let's just put that back in there and start that one. This actual uh, impact's got adjustable torque on so you can go really slow with it. So if you're wondering if I'm going to break anything or not, I'm just going really slow. You can feel it just up. So that's the petrol tank back on. And this is the point where you would look, if you've got a bit of fuel in here, you just look, fill it up with a little bit of fuel, even an, uh, like an egg cup full really, just enough to make sure you've got it down the fuel line. Make sure you've got no actual leaks in here as well and all the time you're doing this you're also making sure you haven't moved anything and everything's moving freely as well so let's just refit this actual air filter housing as well you've got the breather pipe to fit on that just pushes on here just slides in this little gap near the actual petrol tank so I'll just put that on there and that's not too bad to get on on this mower and then we just need to align this actual housing from where it was before make sure by the way set that off again Make sure you've got this on here. Remember this part I said I didn't want to lose? There's actually two little plastic lugs here that they kind of fit over so it, it kind of stays on there quite nice. So I'll just refit that. Free the pipe on top of there and push that on there. And then I'm going to refit that there. We've got the two parts I had stuck in my magnetic tray earlier. I'll put those on. You hear an aeroplane going over? Don't hear that much recently. This has been filmed during the uh, coronavirus pandemic and I've not heard much of that. I don't even live um, near a major airport anyway. That sounds quite near. I don't know what that is actually. I used to work at um, an RAF base. I used to service Takano aircraft while I used to work on the flight line, marshalling and checking oil and doing basic things like that. So. It's just shut down as a one near my house, which is unfortunate, and a lot of people have lost a job there. And it's, um, some people have worked there. I mean, I'm in my forties now. When I started there, I was 17, and a few of the lads that started there with me as well have just lost a job. They're there all that time, and they're my age now. So anyway, too much aeroplane talk. I've got those in there. I'm just going to tighten these back up. Should really do this by hand, to be honest. That's it, that's all we need to do with that. I'm going to grab these air filters we took off earlier. If you look at these on your lawnmower and they're filthy, you can clean these out with some old fuel, let them dry off and just get a little bit of light oil and just rub your hand over it and that'll just stop the dust going through back through the filter and into the car because you don't want to service all the carburetor up do you? And then find out you've dragged a load of uh, dust and dirt over it. So that goes there. I'll put that one around here like that. And then you've got your air filter box, with these little tabs on the bottom there, pushing there. If you can't get these on, by the way, don't forget you can always move. You see how I move this height adjuster? You can always move that out of the way, just to give yourself a bit more space. So press that in there. See how it drops in at the bottom? These three things drop at the bottom there. They all press in like that. I'll we'll push these back in here. So that's the whole carb off service back together. Air filter housing back on. The air filters back in. Petrol tanks back on. Fuel lines connected, and the breather pipe back in there as well and all the time we've been doing that we've been checking all the linkages to make sure everything moves freely as well now the next part of this service is absolutely crucial to check if you've got a lawnmower that won't start and run you can see the operator lever at the top and I mentioned earlier it moves this actual brake that clamps to the flywheel here you can see or when I operate this it moves away from the actual flywheel so you've got this is the brake and this is the flywheel the brake moves away from the flywheel so you think, well, what's the problem with this when the lawnmower stops? You let go of the handle, the brake touches the actual flywheel, and that's fine, it'll stop the lawnmower. The problem is when you want to start the lawnmower if you can't get a spark. Now, these lawnmowers actually have a kill switch on here. You can see here how it goes to this spade connector, 
and this brake actually touches against this part here which is the kill switch and if it doesn't disconnect if this brake part doesn't disconnect from this actual kill switch you won't get a spark you have to have a disconnection to be able to get a spark and the spark runs all the way from the spade connector here down this wire right round here and into this ignition coil down the ignition coil into the spark plug lead into the spark plug and obviously fires the engine so when you operate this lever if you watch under here you should actually see there's a disconnection here between this little part that bends up here and the brake you see how it just jumps up and I kind of had to press that with my finger to make it actually get there but you see how it moves out of the way if that doesn't disconnect and this is the important part if these two parts don't disconnect you won't get spark because once they connect it stops the spark actually traveling to the ignition coil so keeping good order of this cable and making sure it's in perfect working order and pulling exactly the right amount is absolutely critical if you've got a lawnmower that won't spark and won't start so I'll just do that a few times just to kind of emphasize the point really because this is super important that you get this if you don't understand there must be a disconnection there if there isn't a disconnection when you pull the lever at the top of the handle the lawnmower won't start when it connects again not only does the brake touch the flywheel this actually stops the spark going to the ignition coil the correct oil for this actual lawnmower most four stroke lawnmowers is this SAE 30 oil I think I mentioned earlier I'll try and link to this in the description this does not come with these Mountfield lawnmowers so when you buy this it isn't shipped with the oil so if you're not sure what to get this is what you need SAE 30 oil and the way you look at this and check it is to remove this engine oil dipstick on here and what you need to do to check the oil is you need to undo this dipstick here you need to get yourself a little bit of cloth and clean it off there's actually none in this actual lawnmower if you clean this off you can probably just about see there's some little markings on here as long as the oil's between this marking and this marking it's got uh, enough in and not too much so you just put a little bit in until it comes up this stick just put the stick in thread it back in to the bottom like that take it back out take a look at how much oil you've got in and as long as it's somewhere between these two markings on here you've got the actual correct amount of oil in this lawnmower it's really worth checking this as well and as I've said there's none in here at the minute because I'm going to show you how to take the blade off this lawnmower as well in case you want to sharpen it up next we're going to take a look at removing this spark plug and this once again is a lot easier with the actual starter recoil cover removed this is uh, kind of sunk a long way back in here you can see how far it sits back in there and it's not easy to get in obviously you can't even get really a, a spanner in there too easily even now so what I have a, I have a set of box spanners I can put this on here I've loosened this just for the purpose of the video just so I can take it out but it's a lot easier with the recoil cover off if you're looking to buy a tool to remove this you'll need um, a spark plug socket with a 16 mil end so I'm going to undo this we'll have a look at the plug I'll show you exactly what sort of plugs in it and I will link to the correct spark plug in the actual description of this YouTube video as well and I'll probably link to an NGK one or a Champion one you can probably just see up there I always use NGK but the one that's in this is a just a, some sort of generic spark plug it's a K7 RTC so I'll match that up to a what I would call a reputable uh, brand that doesn't come with it so I'm going to use a, an NGK one or a Champion I'll link to something that's appropriate for this actual engine in the description of the video but that's how it comes out and you will need a spanner such as this with a 16mm end on to remove the spark plug probably best to not clean these off and touch these and do all sorts of things with them it's just best to replace these if you're having running problems just take a look at the end if there's any real big bits of dirt on it obviously it's worth taking that off but I always recommend once you've taken these out if they've been used just to um, replace them so just to repeat myself again this is a K7 RTC and it has ST written on the other side of it I don't actually think you'll find one of those online and as I've said I will link to one of these in the description of the video so that's pretty straightforward but I wanted to show you it you can actually set the valves on these lawnmowers as well with this overhead valve there's loads of videos on the channel you can probably see some of those on the Honda videos I've done and it shows you how to set the valve but when your lawnmower's new you're probably not going to need to do this for quite a while but it's, this is actually a great design because as the years go by and the engine gets worn the idea is you can adjust the gap on the valves and it keeps your engine running at optimum performance 
just because I've got the tool out I'll show you how to remove the exhaust this is an exhaust this is a guard that just goes over the top you want to make sure this is on especially if you've got pets because these exhausts get hot or young children that don't know which parts get you know hot and they could get into a little bit of trouble touching these so make sure this is a uh, in place as it should be and this is the cover that just protects from the actual heat underneath it so just because I've got the tool I'll just take it off I'm going to take off the exhaust card and I'll show you how to take the exhaust off sometimes it's not very often you get parts in these exhausts such as in here you must make sure this is cool by the way they get blocked up you get uh, mice that have been in when things have been stored stuff like that and if you have a, a blocked exhaust port you can have problems starting your lawnmower so while I'm here I'll show you how to take it off it's pretty straightforward really so we'll just unbolt that and the reason I wanted to show you this is because this actual governor is attached here you can see here from the carburetor so you can unhook that if you needed to replace it the whole thing just comes off and you have actually got a gasket that sits behind here that fits just on here as well so even though this is a brand new lawnmower and obviously it's clean underneath I just want to show you the underside of here and of course once again on the video I will just mention the spark plugs removed but I want to show you what to look for under here even though this is a plastic deck it's really important that you clean off at the end of the season at least all the grass that will be stuck to the underside of the decks if you don't do that you'll find that it collects underneath here this is your actual drive belt here and it gets down the back of here and eventually it can drag the belt off this actual blade adapter here and if you've self drive stop working on this type of like Mountfield lawnmower what you need to look at here on this actual blade adapter here this is where the belt sits and if you've got a lot of grass under here sometimes the belt can come off and there is actually room above this part which is a blade adapter for the actual belt to go so sometimes the belt hasn't snapped and the self drive might not be working because the actual belt has gone above the blade adapter so that's the first thing to look at the reason I mentioned cleaning this off as well is if you don't clean it off the grass that you have cut won't go back through the chute and go into the grass collector properly either you won't get the actual back draft from the blade now this blade will come off and there's a few reasons for sharpening the lawnmower blade obviously it'll cut the grass better when it's sharp but you might want to balance it and also if it doesn't have the correct angle on anymore when you cut the grass it doesn't lift the grass back up into the deck and down the chute into the grass collector properly it's really important to have the correct angle on the blade everything kind of matters really especially if you're planning on cutting wet grass with it and you see these little parts here these little pins here I always call these pins these need to be sat on this lawnmower here through the blade and what they're designed to do is if you hit something with the actual blade like a drain cover or a tree stump these are designed to smash and the blade turns a little bit and it protects the actual crankshaft from bending inside through the actual engine and in the bottom of here as well there is actually a keyway that will help with that but just to look at if you take all the fluids out your lawnmower you can tip this up you always tip these with the carburetor side facing up and if you service it and you've got all the fuel and oil out I suggest tipping this up and just taking this blade off I just run mine along at a bench grinder following the natural angle and sharpen up the blade and just take this off I'll show you the actual blade and all you need to do you can do this with a file of course is just find the cutting edge of the blade which is this side here you just need to follow this natural angle you can just see here it's got a natural angle onto around here you just need to follow that and just sharpen it up a little bit take all the actual old grass that will be stuck to the bottom of the blade off and I've got a little blade balancing tool up here you can get yourself one of these and you can just put this on the actual tool and you've got it laid flat somewhere and it'll tell you if it's actually balanced if it's not you'll find that one end actually lies down like this or the other end like that you need to get it nice and balanced so the actual blade is nice and even something like that obviously better to demonstrate this on a flat surface but you get the idea if it isn't just take a bit more off one side of the blade and this is um, kind of more important really on bigger lawnmowers with wider blades because if you don't have them balanced you get more vibration so a few reasons to sharpen the blade obviously to cut the grass better it'll uh, collect it in the box better as it'll push it back through the chute and you'll be uh, helping yourself not have any vibrations as well and to refit your blade pretty straightforward really but these are the little pins I'm telling you about here you can see 
Oh, the belt actually sits on that blade adapter there as well. I'm going to put this back on here now. I'm just going to finger tight that there. You must make sure it's on these pins here. I'm just tighten that back up there. And that's one advantage of having adjustable torque on one of these because you can go slowly like that. Make sure everything's in the correct position. I'm just tighten that blade back up. Once you've done that, you can put the lawnmower back down. And this is, uh, I suggest doing this if you've got no fluids in the lawnmower. If you've got no oil in here and no petrol, it's a great time to just take a little bit of time and service the underside of your lawnmower as well. Obviously this is plastic. If it wasn't plastic, I'd either clean this off if it was dirty with a pressure washer or a wire brush. And I'd just give it a, a coat of paint. I normally use just some hammerite on the bottom of the metal decks. So this video is really turning into a, a, a really full service video for this type of engine, this type of lawnmower. So do me a massive favour, leave me a comment in the comment section or uh, click like on the video because it really helps my videos get promoted and it helps other people find how to do this for themselves and save them a little bit of money as well. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is replace this starter recoil rope as well. Once again this is obviously brand new but I'll go through the whole procedure of what you can do if yours is either snapped or it's frayed and I'll show you how to change this over. So you'll need a few things to help you with this. If you haven't got a clamp, you might just be able to wedge something through the actual top of the recoil to stop this thing turning. I'll show you that in a minute. You'll need a knife, you need a lighter, and obviously you'll need some uh, starter rope as well. You can buy them singly, or you can buy them in a spool like this for not much more money. These are three and a half millimetre wide, and I sell all the parts for lots of more such as this at the website, which is repairlawnmowersforprofit.com. So if you want any parts like that, you'd be uh, supporting the channel if you'd go over there and have a look on the parts store for those. So what we need to do with this is we need to obviously replace this. I'm going to pull this out as far as it'll go and I'm going to clamp to stop the actual tension going back in like that with my other fingers. So it's not magic, it's me uh, actually holding this. I'm going to pull this rope right out. You can see here how it connects on the actual inside here. So just put that on there. The reason I like to have a clamp here is because I can just get the clamp in at this point, like this. And I can just tighten this up. And this is the part I'm saying, and I shouldn't really say this, but if you haven't got a clamp, you could put something through here and through the recoil just to stop the spring tension actually taking this back up. So I'm going to clamp that. I can let go of that now. You can see it's not taking up the tension, so I'm not working against the spring. What you would do is put your new cord in, just pull this one out of here. And then you just need to cut the end of this actual cord off. So I'll do it as if I was putting a new uh, recoil rope on. Cut the end off like that. And you can pull the whole thing out. And you take this end off as well and thread yourself a new handle onto your new starter rope. I'm going to measure this for you so you know exactly what length this rope is as well. So the length of this actual starter rope, you don't have to be exact. It just needs to be somewhere near 220 centimetres or 7 foot 3 the first thing you'll need to do is swap your handle over or fit yourself a new handle on the uh, end of your new pull cord rope. So just pretend, you have to use your imagination and pretend I'm using some of this starter rope. But imagine this is your new one, you just push your cord back up through here, take it through here, tie a knot and pull it tight. And then you've got the rest of this, as you can see, is just loose. And we've got this end that we need to thread back through here. So easy way to do this is to burn the end of it so it's not frayed make it into a point which makes it much easier to actually push back through and I'll show you that in a minute you can see I'm just making that into a nice neat point there and it just stops it fraying we need to push this right back through the outer part of the recoil into this spool part here as well that's why it's important and I like to make it into a, a nice accurate point like that so we can see on here this is where your actual pull cord threads in from so we're going to poke that in there and the trick to doing this is you need to find exactly on this circular part here which bit it pushes into you need to line this hole up here where my finger is here at the bottom with the hole on here and push this through and sometimes it's not that easy to see and I can see on this one here just inside there I can just see there that that's where the hole is so I'm going to spend a little bit of time just trying to put that back through there and this isn't the best lawnmower to try and do this on and the key to doing it is just to move this round slightly until you get both of these parts lined up. So we'll have a go at lining that up. I'm going to push that through there 
and I've just moved this around a little bit just to line this up so I'll push that through there and this might just take you a minute or so to do you can see how that's come straight through there how it's gone through both these parts you can probably tell I've done that a few times before as well sometimes it just helps by the way if you bend the actual recoil like that a little bit whichever way it wants to bump into the spool if you leave it straight sometimes it doesn't help if you bend it the opposite way so it tries to poke itself through the hole that sometimes really helps so let's just put a knot in there I normally put a couple of knots in there there was only one in there actually as long as they're small enough you're not going to have too many problems I pull these nice and tight and then I'm going to pull this rope back through here and it just needs to sit nicely in one of these actual cutout sections in here as long as it's not sticking out it's not going to cause you any problems so I'm going to tuck that one in a little bit more under there just pull it back through make sure everything's nice and tight at this point don't let go of the clamp what I want you to make sure you've done as I explained before is make sure that this handle is connected because if you take the clamp off and it rewinds the whole recoil rope and it'll rewind the whole thing in obviously without this on the end it'll wind the whole thing in and you'll have to take the whole thing apart and get it actually off again so now I know that that's there I'm going to take the spring tension up with my fingers here and remove this clamp it's going to start to try and unwind on me and I'm just going to kind of very slowly hold this here let it just take it back up a little bit at a time you can see there we're back where we started we've got this full recoil rope back on this starter recoil so it's not too difficult to do the key to really getting it right is to burn the end of the rope line everything up and get it pushed back through now I had a question on the YouTube channel about a week or so ago now asking if there were magnets on both sides of the flywheel on an RS100 engine I honestly couldn't remember but I've just had a look on this one here you can see where the magnets are see these these parts are magnetic someone wanted to know if there was magnets on both sides of the flywheel I presume that's because um, it'll help it start because the magnets pass over this ignition coil which is something I'm going to show you how to set I just wanted to say while I've got it clear in my mind that there's only one set of magnets on one side of the flywheel on this actual SP164 ST120 over at valve engine they're just one set on this side so I'm going to show you how to set this ignition coil these coils very rarely fail on any type of lawnmower nowadays most of the time if you can't get spark it's because this lead's broken or the actual wire that I showed you that runs round the flywheel to the kill switch is broken but sometimes people take these parts off and they don't know how to set them so I'm just going to quickly show you how to set this ignition coil what you need to get with this ignition coil is an even gap you can see there's a tiny gap there between the coil this ignition coil here and this flywheel and what people do when they messed about with the lawnmower is they decide to take loads of parts off and they're not really too sure how to get them back on they take parts such as this off here and I'll show you exactly what happens if I just back that one off a little bit and that one off a little bit you'll see that the coil actually starts to move you can see obviously it's loose and as you turn this round it'll grab hold of the magnets like that you see how it jumped now you need to set an even gap between ignition coil and flywheel the way you do that is you turn it away from the magnets so everything's loose then you need either a playing card or I cheat a little bit and I keep the lid dropping things on the floor um, I keep the lid off some uh, spark plugs here as a bit of card and what I do is I put it in the gap this is kind of the uh, easy way to do it really press the actual coil up against the card as you can see there and then I turn this actual wheel around until the magnets grab the coil like that and that, those magnets are actually grabbing the coil through the card so once they're through the card obviously you can't really fail because that sets the gap with the card in between the coil and the flywheel and I'm careful with that not to snap that off and tighten that up and then what you need to do is just turn the flywheel remove the card and you can probably just about see there you've still got the same gap that you started with so the key to it is to put the card in where the magnets aren't turn it round here till the magnets grab the actual coil which is there set the gap by tightening everything up and remove the card that's all you need to do to set the ignition coil on a petrol lawnmower 
And just in case you're wondering, because I've had pretty much every bit off this lawnmower, is I am actually going to start this before the end of the video. I'll put some oil and fuel in this, and I will start it. And I'm just going to quickly put this back together off camera. I just want, thought I might as well do it and um, show you what I'm doing. So this just goes on over the top of here. And I wanted to show you this because this is something that you can get wrong as well, because these parts can easily fall out. These silver parts go missing. They need to drop on there. More importantly, this spark plug lead actually has a cut out section here on this SP164 where it needs to fit. That lead needs to go there. You don't want it trapped under here. If it gets trapped underneath here, it'll stop these linkages moving around. And quite often I pick these sort of lawnmowers up to repair for profit. Someone's had them in bits and they've managed to get this under here and all of these linkages and rods and everything can't move. So although it may seem quite straightforward, just keep your eye on all these parts when you put them back together. So we've got that there. Obviously that's going to go back on the spark plug. I always do that last, just before I start the lawnmower. Now I've got my new recoil rope on in there. Put this actual cover back on here, like this. And that just sits on there. I'm going to find these parts that are in my magnetic tray. Right from the beginning, up here. And we're just going to put this recoil cover back on. Just drop these in here. And then I'm just going to tighten those back up. And of course I must remember to put this sticker back on so I'm just going to carefully place the sticker back on there like that. Try and get it nice and even so you would never know that that had been off. Pop the sticker back on there and everything's back exactly as it should be. It's such a shame we have to take that sticker off to get that off really. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's not always the case. So that sticker's nicely back on there and you'd never really know that we've been in there. If I was keeping this lawnmower, just some of the little things I'd do, I'd probably just oil this up once or twice a year and put a little drop in there. Make sure that moves freely. I've, I've shown you earlier in the video how critical that is to making that kill switch disengagement. And I'll probably just drop a little bit of oil down from the top of it and let it run down inside the cables as well. And now and again I would make sure that these screws are still nicely tightened in here and all the handles are tight. In fact whichever lawnmower you're doing you always make sure the handles are tight before you send it out. So now we're finished with that part of the service. I'm going to put some oil in here. We're going to get this ready to actually try this lawnmower. So I'm going to remove the dipstick from here. I'm going to put some oil in here. And I have a big tub of this SA30 oil. So make sure that part's tight in there. I've actually got some of this left over as well. So I have a big thing of it here I get topped up now and again from the local auto jumble. So I'm going to put around 300 millilitres in here. They normally take just under half a litre of oil but I think it needs to take a little bit less. So in fact I'll put I'll just put a couple of hundred millilitres in there just to start. We'll put this in the mower and we'll just work our way up the dipstick. I'm sure that's on the side there. I'm going to work our way up this dipstick, making sure we don't put too much in. You don't want to overfill a lawnmower engine, so we'll just take our time. I'm going to use that one. Um, put a couple of hundred mil of oil in here, let that run into there. And the thing with doing this is you must give the oil a chance to run down into the bottom of the engine before you actually measure this on the actual dipstick as well. And we'll pop that in there. We'll just give that a minute to run down inside there and then we'll measure the oil level and we'll just top it up. I think I remember I did a lawnmower very similar to this. It might have even had the same engine on a slightly different car but it didn't take that much oil. So I put 200 millilitres in there and all you need to do is just clean off the dipstick. We'll thread this right in. I usually thread these down to the bottom to check. It's the easiest way of not overfilling it really. So we'll take that back out of there. And we'll just take a look. You can see on there, it's around three quarters of the way up this uh, actual hexagonal part. So we'll just give that a little bit more of a chance to settle. I'll put this in, I'm going to check this a few more times. As I said, I've only put a couple of hundred millilitres in here. But it doesn't take a lot of oil, doesn't this actual engine? I'll just check that off again. You can see there, we're somewhere near halfway up the stick, so... We'll make sure we've got some oil in, we'll make sure we've got some petrol in. I'm going to take this outside, I'm going to start it up and show you that even though we've had loads of parts off this, 
well hopefully this lawnmower runs perfectly hopefully you can see the actual engine oil level on the dipstick now I've got that kind of three quarters away up this hexagonal part so I know there's a correct amount of oil in there as well what I would tend to do is if I was topping the oil up when I finish I'd probably just take a little bit off the engine oil dipstick and this is so close to the hole I'd probably just put a little bit of oil on that cable there and just let it go at the same time as topping the oil up that way you can't forget to do that now you have a bit more knowledge of the, the actual kill switch one thing I've just noticed I've not noticed really before is that even with the recoil cover and the exhaust guard and everything fitted back together you can still actually see and check that this kill switch is working properly without actually taking any covers off so that's um, just something I've noticed I just wanted to put on camera so probably uh, not the best design so it really should be covered over to stop loads of dirt getting in there but at least you can see it and now you know what it is and how it works you can keep your eye on that so I think we're about ready to go I'm going to drop some petrol in here I'm going to take it outside I'm going to attempt to start this lawnmower up. And don't forget, if you haven't already, take a look at the website, which is repairlawnmowersforprofit.com, with loads of uh, spares on there. And there's about 40 articles on there, all to do with this type of petrol lawnmower on Briggs and Stratton engines and Hondas and all sorts of things like that. So if you haven't headed over there, you'd be doing me a huge favour by looking at the website, which is repairlawnmowersforprofit.com. Just to clear up the actual engine model of this, it's going to go under here. You can see here. It's a WBE 120 engine. This has actually been labelled on here by Mountfield as an ST120 overhead valve engine. If you need any parts for these lawnmowers, you need to look at these service tickets that are on the back, these silver ones here. It tells you all the little details you might need to quote if you're in the number service link. Or if you have a local lawnmower um, service centre, they'll want those details as well. So you've got the engine details on the back of the engine block, you've got Mountfield's own version of it on here and the model number of the lawnmower is in Mountfield SP164. So let's drop a bit of petrol in here, we'll take this outside and we'll fire this lawnmower up and make sure the self-drive works as well. Well, let's get this out, it's actually the next morning now, I'm filming this the next day. It was uh, quite late last night when I was filming so I've not fired this up yet, although I'll just put some petrol in it. And this lawnmower has never actually uh, been run before so let's just get this out and I'll just show you hopefully that it all fires up and runs exactly as it should so I'm going to turn the camera off then but we'll do this I like to do these things live on the channel I nearly broke my fluorescent light fitting then um, I'll put this uh, camera on the tripod here and I'm not expecting it to not work but as you've if you watched the whole video you'll know I've had a lot of parts off this lawnmower so let's uh, Let's just give this a go and make sure it works exactly as it should. No primer on this, so it should just be able to lift up this top handle here. So I really hope you've enjoyed this service video on this Mountfield SP164, it's been very in depth but if there's anything I've not covered and you'd like a question answering just leave me a comment in the comment section of the YouTube video. Thanks for watching and um, I hope to see you on the channel next time.